I am going to create a series of videos demonstrating how various types of LED strips work and how you can control them with Arduino. For this I gathered all the LED strips I could find in my drawer and here they are. First we have the most basic single color LED strip. Next there is an RGB LED strip which lets you change the color of all the LEDs at once. Then there is the strip that allows individual control of each LED state and color. And finally another variation of an individually addressable LED strip. There is a lot to cover, so in this video I will start with the simplest one. The single color LED strip. I am excited to get started, so if you want to explore those LED strips with me, stick around. Let's look at the single color LED strips. Let's start with the white 5V LED strip like this one. Unfortunately, I do not have one in my tangled bunch of strips I showed you earlier. But let's talk about it as it will help us learn a thing or two about LED strips, how they work and how to power them properly. As you can see, the strip consists of several segments. You can cut it along the indicated lines. So let's do just that and isolate the single segment. Here it is. You can see the LED. The forward voltage of the LED depends on its color. For example, you can see the values for red, green and white LEDs. Another important value to note is the desired LED current, which is typically around 20 milliamps. A 5 volt power source is too high for a single LED, but too low to drive multiple LEDs in a series. According to Kirchhoff's voltage law, the total voltage drop across all components in the circuit must be equal to the supplied voltage. The power supply provides 5 volts. The LED has a forward voltage drop of 3 volts when conducting. That means we need to drop the remaining 2 volts elsewhere, which is why we use a resistor. Using Ohm's law, we can determine the resistor's value. So we take the power supply voltage, subtract the LED's forward voltage and divide it by the desired LED current. This gives us a resistor value of 100 ohms. The picture of the 5 volt LED strip is a bit blurry, but you can decipher the resistor's value as 101 ohms, which is close enough. With the resistor in place, you can now safely apply the input voltage. In this setup, the current flowing through the LED will be approximately 20 milliamps, which is the desired value. We can also add as many similar LED and resistor combinations in parallel, as long as the power supply can provide enough current for all of them. So what do we need to do to control such a strip from the Arduino? With this type of LED strip, we don't have a lot of control options. We can either turn the strip on or off and control its brightness. We already have one segment of the LED strip, so let's add the Arduino into the mix. We can power it directly from the Arduino using the 5 volts and ground pins. But unfortunately, if we add more segments to the strip, things get more complicated. Let's look at the current limitations of the single Arduino pin. You can draw a maximum of 40 milliamps from a single pin, which translates to enough power for two LEDs of this strip. However, the recommended value is 20 milliamps per pin, meaning it's best to power just one LED directly from the pin. Additionally, you can draw a maximum of 200 milliamps across all the pins of the Arduino, which shows that the Arduino is meant to control devices, not to power them. There are also additional limitations on the current that can flow through the 5V pin. So in the circuit shown, which powers just one segment of the LED strip, it's fine, because it draws 200 milliamps from the Arduino pin, which is within the limit. But let's say we have a strip made of four segments. In this case, we would be drawing 80 milliamps, which exceeds the allowed current for the single pin. This means we can't power the strip this way. So what options do we have? Let's look at the LED strip as a circuit powered by an external 5V power supply, consisting of multiple combinations of LEDs and resistors arranged in parallel. We can connect the Arduino and the circuit grounds, disconnect the negative terminal of the LED strip from the negative side of the power supply and place the N-channel MOSFET in between. The MOSFET will be used as a switch to control the LED strip. 
You can find more information on this topic in one of my tutorials. So how do we connect it? The drain of the MOSFET connects to the negative terminal of the LED strip. The source is connected to ground. The gate is controlled by a digital output pin from the Arduino, which turns the MOSFET on or off. We place a 220 ohm resistor in between. This resistor is needed to limit the current flowing into the gate and protect the Arduino pin. We also connect the gate to ground via a 10K resistor. This resistor ensures that the MOSFET stays off when there is no signal from the Arduino. It pulls the gate to ground, preventing accidental activation. To complete the circuit, we also need a button to turn the LED on or off. We will be using the built-in pull-up resistor corresponding to the pin used. You can find more information on this in this tutorial. Finally, we need a potentiometer to control the LED strip's brightness. I will use this linear potentiometer and connect it to one of the Arduino analog pins. And now the circuit is ready. Well, at least on paper. I won't be able to build it in real life since I don't have a 5 volt single color LED strip. But that's actually a good thing because it gives us the opportunity to explore a 12 volt single color LED strip, which I do have. If you are not familiar with my channel, you might not know that four years ago I knew very little about electronics. I still have a lot to learn, but back then I was virtually illiterate in the field. Whenever I was buying LED strips or LED matrices, I always went for 5 volts one because that's the voltage supported by Arduino. I thought that 12 volt LED strips were made of different types of LEDs that require 12 volts to operate. Imagine my surprise when I realized that they are made from the same type of LEDs. The difference lies only in the way they are arranged within the strip. 12 volt power source is too high for a single LED, but too low to drive many LEDs in a series. The best balance is grouping three LEDs in series to effectively match the 12 volt power supply. So if you are working with 12 volt power supply and have three LEDs in series, the total voltage drop across LEDs will be 9 volts. The remaining voltage, 12 volts minus 9 volts equals 3 volts, is dropped across a resistor. Using Ohm's law, we can calculate that for the white LEDs, this resistor should be 150 ohms, ensuring the correct current flows through the LEDs. Now let's go back and modify the circuit we originally designed for 5V LED strip. We'll leave the button and potentiometer connections as they are, but replace the 5 volt strip with a 12 volt one. We'll also need to change the input voltage to 12 volts. Now we can add as many LED segments as long as the power supply can provide enough current. The one I'm using delivers 2 amps. Since each segment draws 20 milliamps, we can calculate how many segments this adapter can power. 2 amps divided by 20 milliamps gives us 100 segments. This means 300 LEDs. Let's build the circuit. Here's the main attraction, a single color LED strip consisting of three segments totaling nine LEDs. I will be using an Arduino Uno clone mounted on a custom breadboard that I created in one of my previous videos. To power the circuit, we'll need a DC jack socket for connecting an external 12 volt power supply. Since we require multiple ground connections, I will expand the number of ground sockets using the built-in extensions on the breadboard. With several connections to make, let's create and follow a checklist to ensure we don't miss anything. Starting with the button. One side connects to ground and the other one goes to digital pin 2, an interrupt enabled pin. I made a mistake and initially connected it to digital pin 3, as you can see here, but I'll fix it later in the video. Next, let's connect the potentiometer. The signal pin goes to analog pin A3, while the 5 volts and ground connections go to the Arduino's 5 volts and ground pins. Now, moving to the MOSFET. The gate pin is connected through 220 ohm resistor to PWM enabled digital pin 11 and also through 10K ohm resistor to ground. For the LED strip and power connections, the positive terminal of the 12 volt power supply connects to the positive terminal of the LED strip 
and the negative terminal of the strip goes to the drain of the MOSFET. We are nearly there. The source pin of the MOSFET connects to ground and the final connection is linking the ground of the Arduino with the ground of the 12 volt power supply. And with that, we are ready. Time to look at the code. For starters, we need to define the different Arduino pins we will use. We use digital pin 11 to connect to the MOSFET gate. This pin will be responsible for controlling the LED strip. For basic on-off functionality, any digital or analog pin on the Arduino would work. However, if we want to add dimming functionality, the pin must support PWM, pulse width modulation, which limits our options to a few specific pins. I chose pin 11 for this purpose. Why do we need PWM pin? PWM allows us to rapidly switch the MOSFET on and off at high speed controlling the average voltage supplied to the LED strip. By adjusting the duty cycle of the PWM signal, we can effectively dim the LEDs without affecting their color or efficiency. Next is the button pin. I picked D2 pin for this because it is an interrupt capable pin. You will see the interrupt being used later in the code. The last pin we need to define is the potentiometer pin. Since it provides an analog input, it must be connected to an analog pin. I chose A3 for this purpose. Next, we need a variable to store the current on-off state of the LED strip so that we can keep track of its status. Additionally, we define two more variables for debouncing the button. The first one stores the last time the button state changed and the second one sets the minimum delay before detecting another button press. This helps prevent accidental multiple triggers. In a setup function, we configure the LED pin as an output and the button pin as an input pull-up, as we are using the built-in pull-up resistor. If this part isn't entirely clear, you can refer to my previous tutorial for more details. Finally, we attach an interrupt to the button pin. This interrupt will trigger the toggle LED function whenever the signal on the button pin goes from high to low. Inside the toggle LED function, we capture the current timestamp using millis. If the time elapsed since the last button press is greater than the debounce delay, we toggle the LED state variable. Otherwise, we ignore the press to avoid false triggering. In the loop function, we read the potentiometer value, which ranges from 0 to 1023, and map it to a range of 0 to 255. This mapped value determines the duty cycle of the PWM signal. If the LED state variable is set to true, we send this value using analog write to digital pin 11, adjusting the brightness accordingly. If the LED state variable is set to false, we send a value of 0, turning the LED strip off completely. And that's it. Let's power the circuit. The Arduino will be powered through the micro USB socket on the Arduino clone, while the 12 volt power supply will be connected to the female DC jack socket. You may have noticed that the incorrect button connection has now been fixed. And, well, nothing is happening, but that's expected because the button starts in a deactivated state. So let's press it. And there we go, the LED strip turns on. It's not very bright, but that's what the potentiometer is for. Sliding it in one direction dims the LED strip all the way down, while moving it the other way brings it to full brightness. And it is very bright. The strip responds to button presses, and that's pretty much it. There is nothing more we can do in terms of controlling the strip. So let's wrap this video up. Okay, that was fairly simple. We have learned a lot, and with that knowledge, now we can start exploring more complex LED strips, which offer more control options. But this is the story for a completely different video. Liking, sharing this video and subscribing to my channel goes without saying. Becoming my patron or channel member is optional, but if you would consider that option, that would mean a lot to me. I will see you guys in my next video. Ciao!